The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. It's a brand new week here on the X Zone in. Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and boy, are we ever glad be glad to be back here with you, members of the X Zone Nation, for another week of entertainment, enlightenment, education, and some of the greatest guests on any radio station, any radio network these days. The X Zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern, right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. And my producer tonight at Master Control is the one and only Batman. Nice working with you again, Batman. And if you'd like to give us a call at any time tonight, our toll-free number is one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. Now that is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii, at one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. My email address is xzone at talkstarradio dot com. On MSN Messenger, you can chat with me here in our studios in Hamilton by using the MSN Messenger address talkstarradio at hotmail dot com. On Yahoo, I am, not I am, I am, X-Zone Studio, and our website's www.xzoneradio.com. That's our main site. XZoneTV.com is where you can watch and listen to us live. And X-Zone Store is where you can buy all your X-Zone merchandise. On tonight's show, we have Cliff Mickelson. He's my first guest. He'll be joining me in a couple of moments. We're going to be talking about Morgellons and doing a Morgellons update. Now we're number two, Anna D. Olson is going to talk to us about growing up Amish. And in hour number three, Marie D. Jones will be talking about 2013, the end days or a new beginning. And Patrick Cook will be with us in our final hour for another edition of the Cook Report. The Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon TV and Shortwave. From our broadcast affiliates right across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and now across Europe. Once again, our toll-free number is one 528 8255 Cliff Mickelson is my first guest this morning, Exonation. Uh, Morgellons disease is right out of science fiction novels and that symptoms are not anything but ordinary. The victims report strange animal-like and other forms existing in their skin, usually accompanied by lesions covering many parts of their bodies. Most victims report brain fog, chronic fatigue, severe depression, deep pain in their joints, loss of hair and nails, and in some cases, a strong urge to commit suicide. And joining me now is Cliff Mickelson, one of the uh, most... um, uh, How can I say this? He's out there talking about Morgellons all the time, and he himself is a Morgellons victim. And Cliff, how are you, my friend? Doing great, Rob. It's, it's really a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you once again. Always great talking to you, Cliff. And uh, you, were, uh, you were on a trek through Peru the last time uh, you and I communicated. Yes, indeed I was, down in uh, northern Peru. Very fascinating, fascinating, totally another world down there. Now, what were you doing in Peru? Well, actually, I had a multi-tiered agenda. I was uh-huh. looking around a little bit. I wanted to kind of see. My main reason was to go down there and look through some of the ruins and the ancient uh, from the ancient uh, Indian uh, cultures that existed mm-hmm. in that area. But I was also kind of keeping my eye out for Morgellons cases and uh, just keeping an eye out for to see what the progress of this disease was in South and Central America. And uh, of course, uh, while you were there. Did you talk to people about Morgellons? Do they know about Morgellons down in uh, South America? Yes, actually, I was very surprised. Um, I, I did run into some cases, and that was another uh, real surprise. I wasn't really sure what I'd find down there. 
in Panama, I encountered uh, a number of cases. And in northern Peru, there were, I didn't get down into the southern part of the country, but up in northern Peru, I did encounter several cases. One uh, I wasn't able to completely diagnose, but several others I was uh, able to diagnose as being Morgulans. And people did uh, know they had heard about it. All right, stand by, Cliff. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Cliff Mickelson is our special guest. And if you'd like to speak to Cliff, one 877 Toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My name's Rob McCall. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Cliff Mickelson is our guest this hour, tonight here on the x And uh, Cliff, uh, are there any major developments in the fight against Morgellons? Well, one of the major developments that has actually occurred just recently was uh, down in Austin, Texas, on the 29th of last month, we held a, uh, a convention, a Morgulans mm-hmm. convention, and it was entitled the First Annual Morgulans Disease Medical Research Conference. And there were a number of excellent speakers. It was a chance for the community, <clears throat> for some of the uh, more activist people, members of the community to come together. And the, co- the convention, Rob, was a stunning success. Excellent. Excellent. Um, are you getting more and more reports of uh, of Morgellons? Did this uh, did the convention bring attention the the badly needed uh, attention uh, to the public? Absolutely. And one of the things that this convention did achieve was that it put many of the activist people in personal touch. They were able to get together afterwards, mm-hmm. meet, compare notes. Uh, it came out quite. Uh, quite strongly that there's just an onslaught of new cases. Every week there's more and more cases. And I might add that much to my dismay, the people that really should have been there are good buddies at the CDC and at Kaiser. They never showed up. But some of the other people there, including Randy Wymore, Ginger Savely, uh, Cindy Casey, who organized it, they all uh, were there and gave some excellent reports. Now, uh, did people who just had a general interest in Morgellons, come and see, to listen, and and what were their comments? We had a, a surprising number of people who came uh, in a support role, mm-hmm. uh, people who were members of families uh, who had Morgellons victims, and then other people who were just plain curious and or wanted to lend their support. Uh, that was a really positive thing. Uh, one of the best uh, conferences I've been to uh, in a long time concerning this issue uh, most people that came uh, that didn't weren't actually afflicted were very supportive, and and that's been a um, finding that kind of support prior to this period in time has been a real issue for us. So it was very rewarding. Now, with all the new reports that you're getting in from people who now have more gallons, has the uh, CDC's involvement helped at all? Well, that's. It's a double-edged sword, Rob, in a way. Yes, it has. I would have to say that it has given the issue some credibility. Uh, We will wait and see and reserve judgment as to where the CDC's involvement will take us. But it has, for the short term, given the entire issue of Morgulans some mainstream credibility, which we desperately, desperately needed in order to overcome the the flack that we've been receiving and the, the incredulity that we've had to uh, battle against over the last few years. Now, with this pharmaceutical company being involved, um, have they been in contact with you or any other fine members of the Morgellons uh, research and uh, team that we've been talking to here on Air over the last couple of years? No, they have not. Um, we're, I, I, I'm assuming that you're referring to Kaiser yes. Permanente. Mm-hmm. And they have been extremely obtuse, <laughs> be the best way to put it, inscrutable. They uh, have, have not contacted anyone in this program, 
any of the main moving um, forces, the people that have been really making this issue public, Ginger Savely, all these people, Ralph Stryker, nobody's been contacted by Kaiser. Now, don't you find that rather strange? I find it very disturbing, very disturbing and rather ominous. I'm going to hope for the best on this, but there's a considerable body of people who, who believe that Kaiser has a vested interest in, in containing this issue, and the money that they were awarded by the CDC really isn't going to be enough to properly address this issue in the first place. So there is a group of people inside the Mormons community who feel that this whole CDC Kaiser nexus is kind of a of a false flag operation designed to more or less uh, suppress and uh, and marginalize the issue in the end. How could they do that? Well, of course, <laughs> never underestimate the power of a bureaucracy. Uh, they could do that by simply uh, well, one of the ways that they do that is by underfunding a study. Mm -hmm. If you can't perform a proper study, you don't have proper data, uh, you can kill a study by just not calling the right people, by just pulling statistics that aren't relevant, and there's lots of ways that, that it can be done. Now, Dr. Randy Wymore has done a lot of incredible work. How come they haven't, uh, have they been in contact with uh, Dr. Wymore? This is a real sore issue uh, for me, and I, I am extremely unhappy with the CDC about this, Rob, because... Randy Wymore, of course, Dr. Wymore was in the forefront of yes. this entire issue from the beginning. He, he's dedicated hundreds and hundreds of hours of his own time and his own uh, money to this issue. And all the folks over there at Oklahoma State University have done this and supported him. They've received nothing from the CDC. In fact, the CDC refuses to even contact him. When he, he, he told me that he had tried to submit some of his information to the CDC and they wouldn't even reply to his emails. Why? That's ridiculous. Here's this man who's done so much work, worked with so many people, and yet they're refusing to acknowledge the information that he has? Absolutely, and he's not the only one. Uh, Ginger Savely has also encountered this kind of, of an issue. Uh, Greg Smith, Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith, who volunteered early on to work with the CDC and at least fill them in on what he knows uh, was rebuffed, and so that seems to be the pattern that we're we're seeing from the CDC. Kaiser is just one of uh, we're not interested in what you have to say. Um, about the best thing you can hope for is is that they're hoping to do a completely independent study, but um, without any kind of outside uh, I don't know, outside influence. Yes. But I, I don't understand it, uh, Rob. It, it's it's really di very 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 disheartening. How is the morale within the uh, Morgellons community these days? It's getting stronger all the time. This conference went a long ways towards raising the morale of the people that actually are on the front lines. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, with any struggle such as this one, there's times where you just really can get down. And this kind of brought everyone together and gave everybody a chance to look around and say, hey, you know what? There's some energy here, and it's happening, and and it's a, and we've got good people and and strong research, and this thing's gonna this thing's gonna uh, fly. How did the local media treat it? A uh, little bit jaundiced. They the local station there, I believe, is Channel 11 in Austin. They were there, and we were very grateful to them for that. They did put out a report which Google picked up on uh, on the internet. So that was a positive thing. But as far as the national media, although we did send out press releases and we did attempt to involve the media as best we could, the response as normal from the mainstream media was a little bit uh, disappointing. Unbelievable. Now, the people that were there who actually, uh, like yourself, have more gallons, so were, were, they, were they exchanging stories? Were they exchanging ideas? Were they, were they sharing stories? And... Uh, you must have heard some real heartbreaking stories. Absolutely. And, of course, one of the things is that one of the positive things that come out of conferences such as this is that there's a, a reaffirmation, if you will, where a person who may be isolated or all of us who may be isolated in our day-to-day -day routines and in our day-to-day -day locations can get together and compare notes and say, hey, you know what, I'm like you, you're like me, we're in this together, and this is what we've got, um, and your, your symptoms are identical to mine. Of course, as, as you and I both know, Rob, <laughs> the symptoms 
this particular affliction are so bizarre yeah. that it really, to be able to reaffirm that with other people, that you're, really, really does help you uh, stay centered. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Cliff Mickelson's our very special guest this hour, and uh, Cliff has been on the show a number of times talking about Morgellons, that dreaded disease that nobody knows very much about. And finally, the CDC has gotten involved. They've uh, they've uh, given the uh, research um, research uh, mandate to a pharmaceutical company. And we'll just wait and see exactly what happens. Now, Cliff, uh, when are there supposed to be any results or any uh, any report issued by the pharmaceutical company who has uh, been mandated by the CDC to uh, investigate more gallons? That's a, an issue that a lot of us would like to know. It's been rather nebulous. They're, they're, they've been very inscrutable, as I mentioned earlier. But the... The general consensus is that they need to come down off the mountain with a pair of tablets sometime in the next year. So we're looking anywhere from 10 to 12 months. The uh, the concern, of course, is will they be able to meet that deadline? They were given not given a lot of money by by the CDC. So whether or not they're going to really be able to even fund a study is is an issue that, uh, that remains to be seen. All right, here here's a hypothetical situation for you, Cliff. The uh, the company that uh, the pharmaceutical company, if they were to to um, to do a proper study, funding funding whatever they need from their own little purse, and I don't know any pharmaceutical companies with little purses, isn't it possible that if they were to um, to discover what the cause of Morgellons is, what Morgellons actually is, that they could in turn create a um, some sort of uh, pharmaceutical to either help or get rid of Morgellons, and that would bring them in tons of money. Yes, it would. Um, Kaiser Permanente, of course, is, is a, they're a giant organization, and their primary business, although they are, they are involved in pharmaceuticals, their primary business is insurance. Mm-hmm. So that's another point that many people in the Morgellons community have brought up as being one that raises some doubts as to their their motives and their, their purity, as it were, um, in this particular study, their, their their legitimacy for being assigned this study, because they have an interest in insuring people, and they have a large client base that is insured, mm-hmm. and so they also may find themselves having to pay out as a result of this as well. So it's we're not really sure how that's going to shake out, Rob. Well, isn't it possible that there's a conflict of interest at hand? <laughs> Indeed, there is on several levels. One of the ones I'd like to address is the fact that in the past, Kaiser yeah. Permanente has has ruthlessly, I, I should say, diagnosed all Morgellons patients, the, to the best of my knowledge, with what's called DOP, which is delusions of parasitosis. Cliff, stand by, uh, buddy. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Cliff Mor- uh, Mickelson is our special guest. We're talking about Morgellons. one 877 is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Cliff and I will be back after the news. As the Exxon continues on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. 
Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Cliff Mickelson is my special guest. And we're talking about Morgellons. If you'd like to get more information, if you'd like to make a donation, if you'd like to see what the people at the Morgellons, uh, or, uh, you know, family are doing, visit their website, www.thenmo.org. one 877 is toll-free. My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our website's www.xzoneradio.com, www.xzonetv.com. And our new store at www.xzonestore.com. All right, Cliff, before we went to the commercial break, uh, we were just starting to get into a possible conflict of interest with what the... Uh, what the pharmaceutical or or the insurance company involved in, and and why would why would the CDC give it to a company that is not a pharmaceutical or a research company, but to an insurance company? This makes no sense. Well, this is the first thing that raised flags for most of us in in the Morgan's community was when that took place. It looked like a case of uh, of basically the old boy network routine, yeah. among other things. You know, and one thing I would like to say for the record is that uh, I don't want to come across as being real negative here. Of course, we all hope that the, you know, the bells ring and everything works out wonderfully, and yep. and the Kaiser permanently performs its oblig to its obligation to the fullest. But but there's just too many too many loose ends here, and why they would be awarded the contract in the first place instead of a professional research organization is a, is a very valid question. Uh, there's a series of other issues with Kaiser Permanente. They have a vested interest, and some people strongly feel they have a vested interest in not seeing this particular affliction properly uh, analyzed and diagnosed. So, yeah, you, you raise a very good point, Rob. What happens if the report that this company comes back with it is, is not in the opinion of the Morgellons uh, community, valid. Like, can can it be appealed? Can can people go to the CDC and say, "Hey, listen, why do we get another opinion?" Well, this is if if and when this does occur, it's going to be a very serious blow for for the, the Morgellons community. And the best thing that we can do is prepare for that potentiality. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not to say that that may or may not happen. But were that to happen, and of course, stranger things have happened in the past when it comes to dealing with vested corporate interests. You know, you can never tell whose whose golden goose is uh, is you know being cooked. That's right. So you've got to be prepared for that. And uh, yeah, there needs to be a contingency to deal with that uh, eventuality should it arise. Do you have any idea how um, what what is, the, what is the name of the company that has been given the uh, research contract? It's, uh, well, Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente. Is there any idea on, on how they intend on performing this task? <laughs> well, I wish I knew. And, and like I said, Randy Wymore, myself, uh, Ginger Say, uh, Cindy Casey, none of us have an idea because they are holding their cards extremely close to close to their chest. All we're able to go on is the information that the CDC has released on their own website uh, and, of course, the press release that they they released when they awarded that contract. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with these kind of things, when you're dealing with bureaucracies such as the CDC and with Kaiser, you you have to look at some of the details and you can draw... Are you there, Cliff? ...where the whole thing's going. Uh, Cliff, we're having problems uh, you with you. you know, we're having problems with your audio, Cliff. You, we keep on uh, losing you sporadically. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Glad you're back. Glad you're back. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. You've just got to kind of draw your own conclusions from from mm-hmm. not necessarily say, but they do. You uh, know. We're, ha- we're having we're having. You read between the lines with these outfits. Yeah, my my. I guess another part of the question is, Cliff, uh, if. If they're doing this research, aren't they going to be speaking to people who actually have Morgellons? And, um, you know, wouldn't these people contact uh, the Morgellons family and say, hey, listen, this is what they're asking, this is what they're doing, this is how they tested me? Okay, and now you're really nailing on the head here, because here's where, in my opinion, it lies the crux of the issue of conflict of interest. What's happening is that the CDC has 
um, instructed Kaiser to do this study, and what they're going to do is go back through their patient catalog uh-huh. and find all the people over the past 10 years that they have diagnosed with delusions of parasitosis and try to determine whether or not these people have morgulins. Now, there's an immediate conflict of interest right there because if they do that, they basically have admitted that they gave a false diagnosis. And so then you have the question of what are the legal ramifications of them bringing back in patients that they've already dismissed with an erroneous diagnosis and saying, oops, sorry, uh, we want to see if you really do have something. So the pressure is going to be on them to say, no, you, are, you do have DOP, you don't have Morgulins, and by the way, don't call your attorney. <laughs> so it sounds like they've got a, you know, that's not research. No, it's uh, it's covering your tail. You know, it sounds like we're back at the old witch trials, for goodness sake. Yeah, and uh, it's one hand scratch, washing the other, basically, is what we've got, what we're dealing with. They have a vested interest in not establishing the the, the validity of this uh, affliction because they leave themselves open to all kinds of legal action for false and for erroneous diagnosis in the past. All right, now here we are. It's uh, the uh, you know an election year. Has anybody approached any of the candidates, the presidential candidates, and uh, given them an earful of what's going on? To the best of my knowledge, no, they haven't. However, we have had some very positive and encouraging results with some members of the Senate. In fact, the action taken by some members of the Senate and the House of Representatives were what led Kaiser or led uh, the CDC to to at least throw down the gauntlet. Uh, somewhat grudgingly, they did, you know, move forward because they receive a lot of pressure from from members of Congress. How long does it usually take the CDC to get off their butts and do something? Well, in the case of Morgulins, it takes apparently it takes about ten or twelve years. In the case of some other things, about five minutes. Uh, and that's another very interesting uh, conundrum that that we've been dealing with. The CDC goes out and spends millions and millions and millions of dollars of taxpayer money. To, um, to trump up a bunch of vaccines for diseases that never occur, but we can't seem to get them to come down off the mountain at all for this one. Are authorities still taking children away from parents who are claiming to have Morgellons? Rob, that's one of the saddest parts of this whole story, and yes, they are. I was talking with a friend of mine, a woman that I met there at the conference, Sandy Autry. She had that very same experience happen to her. Um, her, I believe it was her granddaughter was taken away from her. She was the custodial um, guardian, and that, that child was taken away from her because of her diagnosis of DOP because she tried to get help for her condition, Morgan's condition. That it happens just, all of the time. That would just be like someone going to see their family doctor, talking about a disease or giving signs and symptoms of a disease or, or an ailment that they believe they have, and the doctor just scratching his head and saying, you know what, I, I don't think so. You know, it could be this, it could be that, but it's not what you say it is. And yet they don't take away the children of those people. What is it with Morgellons? Is it because it's delusional that, that it's being classed as a delusion of uh, parasitosis? And they and they and that gives them, the, the state, the right to take the children? Um, in effect, yes. In effect, yes, uh, to make it uh, just plain cut and dried. That's exactly what's going on. It, and, of course, the reason that we, we encounter these kinds of diagnoses, these mistaken diagnoses, is because the doctors that are out there are either, number one, too lazy to figure it out, or they're just too crippled by their own training to, to, to investigate something and actually form their own opinions. Um, it's not in their book, so in their world it doesn't exist. And so they chalk it up. Anything they don't understand, they just chalk it up to DOP. And, and then, of course, once you get that diagnosis, uh, it opens up a real can of worms for you. How do these people get their children back? Well, I'm not really aware of anyone that has at this point. I'm sure there may be some people who have. But if you've got that albatross of DOP hanging around your neck, Rob, it, it will ruin your life. And all because you were looking for help. You were looking for help for a, a very real and very serious and ever increasingly a widespread affliction. So we can only hope and pray to the powers to be that this this uh, this report that or this study comes out in favor of Morgellons because there's going to be a lot of explaining to do by a lot of people. 
Absolutely. And I think that even if we run into stonewalling from the the people who were involved in this report, mm -hmm. that the weight of this of this affliction, as it continues to spread, as it continues to move forward through the all levels of society, will eventually tip the scales. And that, uh, you know, some of us may not live to see that day, but nonetheless, this thing is just like Lyme disease, it's just like AIDS, it's just like a host of other diseases that were first relegated to the, the fiction bin that turned out to be just horrible, horrible realities. So what's the, what's the next step? How, what do you do until the uh, study comes back, Love? What do the people who are afflicted with Morgellons do? How do they get help? Where do they go for help? What do they do? Well, there's a number of things. The first thing that, that, that I would like to say to the Exonation and to anyone listening is that we strongly urge people not to just say, okay, the CDC is going to study this or Kaiser is going to study this. So let's just kick back and relax. We've got to keep, keep on keeping on. Get out there and keep the keep up the good fight. Uh, move forward. Uh, continue to educate, educate, educate. Yeah. It's the corollary of location, location, location in real estate. Get out there and let the world know what this is about, because what is affecting your neighbor today may very well be on your doorstep tomorrow. You know, you know, I can I can understand the desire to tell the world, but what do you tell the world? You're you're fighting you're fighting a losing battle. Nobody believes you. Well, actually, I, you know, <laughs> you can you can do like the uh, you can lose a lot of battles and still win the war, and I think that's what we're all prepared to do. Uh, I don't care how many battles it takes, how many battles we are going to lose, and we've lost a lot of battles in the past. We're going to keep on losing battles until we win the war, Rob. I don't, you know, God bless you. You uh, you're one of the. Your group is one of the strongest groups I've ever had the pleasure of working with, and I, I just can't believe the, the brick walls that you and the other fine people within the Morgellons community go up against each and every day. It, it, it's, you know, it's like, like it's something out of science fiction, for goodness sake. Well, it certainly does raise some eyebrows, and of course that gives uh, a lot of ground for people. A lot of people say, well, you know, the resistance that this particular affliction has run into is unlike anything that they've ever seen before and of course then you need to draw the, the next go to the next step and say well why is that what is going on here why is this resistance out there and then you say well is there a reason for that does someone have something to hide exactly. and that's why you have this resistance you know there's a lot of corollaries in other fields uh, where where you have vested interests that may or may not have something to hide and so they minimize and marginalize and do everything they can to the community that's affected by their actions in order to in order to hide their own culpability. You know, you I, th I think you and I talked once about the possibility of a conspiracy here, the possibility of uh, genetic engineering, the possibility of GMO. You know, the possibilities are endless, and yet, after all this time, still no answers. Still no answers, and it's it can be very daunting. But we try not to focus on that. Uh, we try not to focus on the fact that there are no answers today, and we look forward to tomorrow when we will have answers. And, you know, and of course, unfortunately, it's a sad fact of life in the modern world. It all boils down to money. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have researchers out there who have the money to do the tests, and so they have the credibility to go to their peers and say, hey, look, you know, here's, here's how the cow eats cabbage. And even that won't guarantee that, that they're accepted. It, you know, how many... How many years did it take for people to uh, accept the fact that uh, the Earth revolved around the sun and not the other way around? It, it's that kind of a, of yeah, a nexus. I, I understand. I understand that. But in today's society, with science at the level it is, and when you have government agencies like the CDC who have the means and the money to perform the studies and research required when it comes to Morgellons, and, and it seems as if somebody is purposefully, purposely, derailing it every effort going. Yes, it's very easy to draw that conclusion, and I believe that that conclusion can be drawn with um, um, a great deal of validity. Uh, you know, it, these kind of things, you just don't run into these kind of barriers unless there's something going on somewhere behind the scenes. It, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. And if nothing about this whole affliction makes sense other than the fact that people are desperately ill and more people are getting desperately ill every day. All right, you and I have to take our final break for this hour, uh... 
Cliff. I, first of all, thanks very much for joining us. And if you'd like more information, Exonation Nation, on, the, uh, on Morgellons, visit uh, www.thenmo.org. That's www.thenmo.org. Cliff Mickelson and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues on the Talk Star Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. Visit our website at www.exxonradio.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media. Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. Uh, if I sound a little off tonight, it's because I've been fighting this darn cold for nearly two weeks. So I get rid of it, and I give it to Laura. Laura gets rid of it, gives it to me. And Sorry if I sound a little bit out of whack tonight. And, uh, so, there you go. Cliff Mickelson's our special guest. Uh, his website is www.thenmo.org. And uh, first of all, Cliff, thanks very much for joining us and uh, for keeping us in the loop on what's going on in the uh, world of Morgellons. Now, what can we do here at the Exxon? And what can the listeners do? Well, Rob, that's a, uh, a good question. I'm glad you asked it. First of all, uh, we'd like to thank you and the Exxon Nation because you've been here from the beginning for us, and it's that kind of support that really makes uh, makes us able to continue moving forward day after day and get up and face a new day. Uh, base, folks can just continue to educate themselves. They can continue to talk to uh, their friends and their neighbors, keep an eye open, educate themselves about this disease, Rob. That's, that's the main thing. That's what it's all about. All right, so let me see. We've got the CDC and uh, Kaiser Permanente working on this study. Hopefully, it comes back within a year. Hopefully, and I, and you know, like my, I'm going to pray that that it comes back. And and these people have got enough on the, uh, you know, in the chutzpah department to actually say, listen, based on our research, based on the study that we've conducted, based on the people that we are talking to, there is definitely something here. If they were to come out and say that, what would that mean to the Morgellons community? It would mean that we have the credibility to move forward into the mainstream and make the application for the monies that we need to do the research that this is going to take. And of course, I guess by uh, by the CDC having that under their belt, that would just open up the vaults and the research money would be there, as you said. And I, I, I could only hope that Dr. Randy Wymore is involved in the research. Absolutely, because he's been there, as I said earlier. He's been there sure. from the first. He's taken uh, the hits along with the rest of us, and he is a, a brave soul. And, and my hat's off to him and to all the other folks who have, have stepped out and said, you know what, in the face of the def- of the disbelief of their mm-hmm. peers, they have moved forward and said, there is something here. We don't care what everybody else says. We don't care what kind of pressure we get from our fraternal organizations that we belong to. We believe there's people out there who are suffering, who have an affliction that may someday affect us all, and we're going to investigate it. To you people, and I'm talking to each and every person listening tonight who has more gallons, God bless you. You are the bravest people that I know, and if there's anything, Cliff, that we can do here, all you have to do, my friend, is just let us know. It's that simple. Well, we certainly appreciate that, Rob. And, and as I've said once before, and I'll say it again, uh, you guys, you, uh, the Exo Nation and Rob McConnell, you guys have been there for us, and, and God bless you all. Cliff, take care of yourself. Give my best to all the other people that work so hard with you in trying to get this disease finally understood, finally cured, and finally acknowledged. Take care, Absolutely. my Absolutely. Well, Thank you very much. Take care, my good friend. Cliff Mickelson, www.thenmo.org. That's www.thenmo.org. Exo Nation, when we come back from the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past, I'll be joined by Anna D. Olson. We're going to be talking about growing up Amish. Now, the Amish are a fascinating and quaint society that has maintained 
an air of innocence, so to speak, living off the land, away from cell phones and 24-hour news cycles. Well, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Anna D. Nelson is going to be joining us, and we're going to be talking about growing up Amish. one 877 is toll-free. I'll be back after the news as we continue right here on the Talk Star Radio.